Well, hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Face to Face Conversations with God. As we read the Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, we've already completed Matthew. We've already completed Proverbs. And we've already completed John. And now we're in Ezekiel. And we're hearing what the Father is saying to us through the book of Ezekiel, one of his prophets. Not only was Ezekiel a prophet, he was a priest before the Lord. Hallelujah. So we thank you so much for joining with us as we read today. And thank you so much for liking the page. We're going to do all our broadcasts from this page now. So we thank you so much for joining. I am going to go out to a couple of my other pages and tell everybody to come and join us on this new page because they're used to me broadcasting on my own timeline. But I want to move everything over to one central location, which is the Facebook page. So we're just going to give a few moments to for people to find us. I know that most of you watch on the replay, but we are going to... Um, get started in just a moment let me just invite followers and as I'm inviting followers don't forget if you're watching the if you're watching the replay hit that share button and invite your friends to watch and we can all read this word together it's not just about us coming on and building numbers just to build numbers but it's about us coming on building numbers as we're reading the word of god and applying this word to our lives and watching a tra watching it transform our lives so as i'm i'm uh inviting my friends you invite your friends also All right, share. Okay, and we are going to get started. Again, I know this is brand new for a lot of people. A lot of you are used to me coming on my timeline, but we are going to begin to keep it all over here on the Facebook page, face-to-face -face conversation with God. We wanna keep everything in a central place. So thank you so much for those that have not joined the actual Facebook page. I believe I sent you an invite on yesterday. Go look in your notifications. I sent all my friends the notification. All you have to do is accept it and begin to follow the page, okay? And this is where it's all going to take place, on the Facebook Live page, okay? So we're going to go ahead and... Um, begin our reading on today we're, today we're on day 22 and we're in ezekiel 5 through 8 again i'm reading from the message bible and i parallel it with the king james i always keep the king james up just in case i feel like i need to go over there and read it in a more familiar uh passage that people have heard before but today i'm reading from the message bible all right. And the prayer that I'm praying, it's a handwritten prayer, but all it is, is a prayer formulated from Ezekiel 36, uh, chapter 36, verses 24 through 28. So father, as we read Ezekiel, give us a new heart, Lord, and a new spirit that only comes from you. Take away the stony heart of our flesh, father glory and give us a heart that is God willed and not self willed 
thank you for pouring out pure water, the pure water of the spirit that washes us. It scrubs us clean. And we thank you for that, Father. Hallelujah. We will be your people and you will be our God. And we will do great exploits in the land, giving you glory. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Okay, we're going to start with Ezekiel chapter 5. And we're going to go uh, uh, to chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 1. Now, listen to the title of Ezekiel chapter 5. A jealous God not to be trifled with. <laughs> now, God's jealousy is not the jealousy that we uh, as human beings are, are accustomed to. Woo. His jealousy is different. I want you to do a study on that. Look up the, the definition of God type of jealousy and why he's jealous. You have to go back to some other chapters in the Old Testament. And God, you will see why God says that I am a jealous God. Hallelujah. So that's your homework. All right. So we're going to start uh, Ezekiel chapter 5 verse 1 from the Message Bible. Now, son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a straight razor, shaving your head and your beard. Then using a set of balancing scales, divide the hair into thirds. When the days of the siege are over, take one third of the hair and burn it inside of the city. Now, remember yesterday we talked about how detailed God is. When God is talking to you, when God is dealing with you, when God is instructing you, he does not just jump over details. He gives you the smallest, most infinite detail that he wants covered. All right? Take another third, chop it into bits with the sword, and sprinkle it around the city. The final third, third you'll throw into the wind. Then I'll go after them with the sword. Retrieve a few of the hairs and slip them into your pocket. Take some of them and throw them into the fire. Burn them up. From them, fire will spread to the whole family of Israel. Now remember, like we said yesterday, although God was talking to the children of Israel, to the nation of Israel, and to the nation of Judah. He was talking to them. But we can apply these principles to our life and get victory. All right? Verse 5. This is what God, the Master, says. This means Jerusalem. I set her at the center of the world. All the nations ranged about her. But she rebelled against my laws and my ordinances. Rebelled far worse than the nations ranged about her, around her. Sheer wickedness. Refused my guidance. Ignored my directions. Is that what we're doing today? Let's examine our heart. Are you refusing God's guidance? Are you ignoring God's directions. So let me, let's listen to what he says when we do that. A lot of times we think that the devil is coming after us. Or we think that we have haters. But it's the hand of God that is against you. Because you are sinning against God. Because I am sinning against God. We as a body of people have been sinning against God. All right, verse 7. Therefore, this is what God, the master, says. You've been more headstrong and willful than any of the nations around you, refusing my guidance, ignoring my directions. You've sunk to the gutter level of those around you. Are you in the gutter? So this is what God is saying to you. Because when you don't obey him... You sink into a gutter-like living. You know it. 
Sometimes you ask yourself, how did I get here? You know it because we didn't follow the instructions of God. Verse 8, therefore, this is what God, the master says, I'm setting myself against you. This is what God says he will do when we don't obey his word and obey his principles and obey his ordinances. He will set himself against you. You will be striving, striving, striving and getting absolutely nowhere. Aren't you tired? Okay, so this is what God says. Yes, against you, Jerusalem. Yes, against you. Put your name in there. I'm going to punish you in full sight of the nations. I'm going to punish you in full sight of your squad. I'm going to punish you in full sight of the people that you know. Because of your disgusting, no God idols. What idols do you have before God? Jesus. I'm going to do something to you that I've never done before and I will never do again. Turn families into cannibals. Parents eating children, children eating parents. Punishment indeed. And whoever's left over, I'll throw to the winds. Therefore, as sure as I am the living God, decree of God, the master, because you polluted my sanctuary with your obscenities and with disgusting no God idols, I'm pulling out. God says I'm pulling my hand of favor away. I'm pulling my hand of grace away. I'm pulling my hand of protection away. Not an ounce of pity will I show you. A third of your people will die of either disease or hunger inside the city. A third will be killed outside the city and a third will be thrown to the wind and chased by killers. Only then will I calm down and let my anger cool. Then you'll know that I was serious about this all along. That I am a jealous God and not to be trifled with. You're not dealing with the human being. You are dealing with the creator of the universe. The creator of everything that we know that exists. That's who you're dealing with. Not me, not your pastor, not your mother, not your brother, not your father, not your friends. You're dealing with God. Verse 14. When I get done with you, you'll be a pile of rubble. Nations who walk by will make coarse jokes. When I finish my angry punishment and searing rebukes, you'll be reduced to an object of ridicule and mockery turned into a horror story circulating among the surrounding nations. I, God, have spoken. When I shoot my lethal famine arrows at you, I'll shoot to kill. You, did you see? Bet you didn't know God talked like this. You only think of him as this loving, kind God. He is a God of justice and judgment and ordinances. Then I'll step up the famine and cut off food supplies. Famine and more famine. And then I'll send in the wild animals to finish off your children. Academic disease, unrestrained murder, death, and I will have sent it. I, God, have spoken. Are we not seeing this? Academ academic diseases. Are we not seeing this right now? This, this was written years ago. This was written in the time that they were in exile. But we are seeing the same thing happen right now. Unrestrained murder. Death. But God says, I have sent it. Ha. All right, come on, stay with me. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. All you got to do is repent and turn from our wicked ways. Hallelujah. And that hand of punishment removes up off of us. All right? It's the same way you deal with your children. 
don't look at it like, oh, God, it's so hard. Don't you try to protect your kids? Don't you try to tell your kids, don't go down this path. I've already walked down that path. That path is a path of destruction. So why is it okay for you to correct and try to corral and try to protect and try to cover your children, but God can't do that with you? You may be the adult in your house, but you are still God's child. And he still has rules and principles that you and I have to follow. Everything in this world has an order. If it wasn't so, then we would just be flying all over the place and things would just be chaotic. God has an order. All right? Chapter 6, verse 1. Then the word of God came to me, son of man, now turn and face the mountains of Israel and preach against them. All mountains of Israel, listen to the message of God, the master, God, the master speaks to the mountains and hills, to the ravines and to the valleys. I'm about to destroy your sacred God and goddess shrines. God is going to destroy every idol that you have put before him. I'll level your altars, bust up your sun God pillars, and kill your people as they bow down to your no God idols. I'll stack dead bodies, the, the dead bodies of Israelites in front of your idols, and then scatter your bones around the shrines. Every place where you've lived, the towns will be torn down and the pagan shrines demolished. Altars busted up. This is what God is doing in your spirit. He's busting up all the altars. He's busting up all the shrines of these gods that you would put before him. He's smashing. He idol smashes them. All your custom made sun god pillars. He smashes them into ruins. Corpses everywhere. You look. Then you'll know that I am God. When God stops all this foolishness that's going on in your life. And he brings it right to your face and says this is what you're doing. And it doesn't please me. He's going to say then you'll know that it's me. It's God who's against you. It's not your haters. But it's me, God. Verse 8. But I'll let a few escape the killing as you are scattered through other lands and nations. In the foreign countries where they've taken as prisoners of war, they'll remember me. They'll realize how devastated I was by their betrayals. God is devastated. Devastated. When we don't walk in his word, he's devastated. When we sin against his word, it hurts the heart of God. By their voracious lust for gratifying themselves and their idolatries. The only way that we can be carried off into sin is because we lust after it. We want it so bad. We don't care about the consequences. They, it says, they'll realize how devastated I was by their betrayals, by their voracious lust for gratifying themselves and their idolatries. They'll be disgusted with their evil ways. Disgusted. They'll be disgusted with their evil ways. Disgusting to God in the way they lived. They'll know that I'm God. They'll know that I, I am God. They'll know that my judgment against them was no empty threat. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible. I, I, I can see where it is, but I can't remember exactly which. I can see the verse, but I can't remember which chapter and, and, and book it's in. But it says something to the effect because God does not bring judgment swiftly, people think that they are getting away with their sin. <laughs> That's how we do. We think God can't see us. We think if we do it at night, God can't see it. We think if we do it out of town, 
on a business trip <laughs> that God doesn't see it. We think if we have a girlfriend or a man friend set up on the other side of town, not in your house, that God doesn't see it. We think that if we go gamble away all our money in another city, God doesn't see it. All right? <laughs> Verse 11. This is what God, the master, says. Clap your hands. Stamp your feet. Yell out, no, no, no. Because of all the evil, obscenities, rife in Israel. Rife in your life. Rife means alive, working. They're going to be killed. Dying of hunger. Dying of disease. Death everywhere. You look, people dropping like flies. People far away dying. People nearby dying. And whoever's left in the city, starving to death. Why? Because I'm angry. Furiously angry. They'll realize that I am God. When they see their people's corpses strewn all over and around all their ruined sex and religion shrines, on the bare hills and in the lush fertility groves, and all the places where they indulge in their sensual rites, I'll bring my hand down hard on them. Demolish the country wherever they live. Turn it into wasteland from one end to the other. From the wilderness of Ribla, uh, Ribla then, God, then they'll know that I am God. Wow. Whew. All right, chapter 7. This is what chapter 7 is saying. Fate has caught up with you. So Ezekiel is saying, God's word came to me saying, You, son of man, God, the master, has this message for the land of Israel. God, your master, has this message for you. End time. The end of business as usual for everyone. It's all over. It's done. The end is upon you. I've launched my anger against you. I've issued my verdict on the way to on the way you live. I'll make you pay for your disgusting obscenities. I won't look the other way. I won't feel sorry for you. I'll make you pay the way you've lived. Your disgusting obscenities will boomerang on you and you'll realize that I am God. Now, you know, you can stop this boomerang. It's real easy to stop it. But pride stops us from opening up our mouths and saying, God, deliver me. Look, I got things going on in my life that I recognize that I'm doing that I'm like, God, I need you to deliver me of that. Because I recognize it and it's not pleasing in the sight of God. And this is a problem that we have in the body of Christ. We created these perfect church people. Well, let me give you a newsflash. Nobody is perfect in the church. We all have a testimony. We all came from something. We all have been delivered from something. We're all yet being delivered from something. We all yet have things that we're dealing with that God is dealing with us. Let's take these phony masks off and let people see, look, this is who I was. But God transformed my life. And that person that's struggling with whatever it is that you may be struggling with, they're like, oh, wow, God delivered you and he used you? Yeah, yeah, that's the whole point of it. My God. So verse nine, I mean, sorry, verse five, I, God, the master says, disaster after disaster, look, it comes in time. The end comes. The end is ripe. Watch out. It's coming. <laughs> here's the other thing a lot of people are like well I've been doing this for years and I, it ain't nothing happened to me so obviously that word is not real really? nothing's happened to you you got all kinds of diseases you got inflictions in your body and the doctors don't even know what it is 
I'm just saying. This is your fate. Who live in this land. Time's up. It's zero hour. No dragging of feet now. No bargaining for more time. Soon. Now. I'll pour my wrath on you. Pay out my anger against you. Render my verdict on the way you've lived. Make you pay for your disgusting obscenities. I won't look the other way. I won't feel sorry for you. I'll make you pay for the way you've lived. Now, God has said that twice. Your disgusting obscenities will boomerang on you. Then you'll realize that it is I, God, who have hit you. Huh? Some of this stuff that you're dealing with, it's not going to lift up off of you until you come before God and admit you're wrong and admit that you need his help and admit that you need him to cleanse you and accept his son as your savior. Some of this stuff is not going to lift up off of you. A lot of stuff that we're dealing with in this life, it's not even a natural cause it is a spirit that has been leashed out in your life these children of Israel have died and gone on but what we're dealing with are spirits spirits don't die evil spirits don't die godly spirits don't die we're dealing with spirits when you have idols, you open the door for the spirit world, whether it's a, it's, it's a bad effect on you or a good effect on you. If you're walking with the Lord, you see the blessings of the Lord and what the spirit of the Lord brings. When you rebel against him and his word, you open up your life to demonic activity. That's why a lot of the stuff the doctors can't figure out what's going on with you. It's a spirit. You cannot heal a spirit. A spirit has to be cast out. And the beginning of a spirit being cast out is that you begin to recognize it and you repent of it. All right? Ezekiel's not playing. All right? Verse 10. Judgment day. Fate has caught up with you. The scepter outsized and pretentious, pride busting at the bounds, violence strutting, violence struts. You can see that foul spirit brandishing the evil scepter, but there's nothing to them and nothing will be left of them. Time's up. Count down. Five, four, three, two, buyer, don't cross. Buyer, don't crow. Seller, don't worry. Judgment, wrath has turned the world topsy-turvy. Do you see how we are living out, Ezekiel? The bottom has dropped out of buying and selling. It will never be the same again. But don't fantasize an upturn in the market. The country is bankrupt. Because of its sins. And it's not going to get any better. The trumpet signals the call to battle. Present arms. But no one marches into battle. My wrath has paralyzed them. God can paralyze you in your tracks. On the open roads, you're killed. Or else you go home and die of hunger and disease. Either get murdered out in the country or die of sickness or hunger in town. Survivors run for the hills. They moan like doves in the valley, each one moaning for his own sins. 17. Every hand hangs lip, every knee turns to rubber. They dress in rough burlap, sorry scarecrows, shifty and shamefaced, with their heads shaved bald. 
They throw their money into gutters. Their hard earned cash stinks like garbage. They find it won't buy a thing. They either want or need on judgment day. They tripped on money and fell into sin. Have you tripped on money? Have you made money your God? God doesn't have a problem with you having money, but have you made it your God? And it has tripped you up. Not all money is God sent. Some of this money will trap you up and you can it's a struggle for you to get out of its clutches. Some of this money that people are having in their banks is dirty money. What did you do to get it? Who did you kill to get it? Whose child did you sell drugs to? How many prostitutes did you go through? How many times did you sell your body to get that money? The money, that it's tripped. You tripped on the money and you fell into sin. He began to increase you and you fell into sin. You walked away from him. The more money you get, the more you better find your face in his face. The more time you better spend on your knees asking him, how do you want me to handle this? What am I to do with this? How do you want me to spread it out? Proud and pretentious with their jewels. They decked out their vile and vulgar no God in finery. I'll make those God obscenities a stench in their nostrils. I'll give away the religious junk. Strangers, strangers will pick it up for free. The godless spit on it and make jokes. I'll turn my face so I won't even have to look at my treasured place and the people are violated. As violent strangers walk in and desecrate place and people. A bloody massacre as crime and violence fill the city. I'll bring the dregs of humanity to move into their houses. I'll put a stop to the boasting and strutting of the high and mighty. And see to it that there will be nothing holy left in their holy places. Did you hear that? Catastrophe descends. They look for peace, but there is no peace to be found. Disaster on the hills of disasters. One rumor after another. They clamor for the prophet to tell them what's up. But nobody knows anything. The prophet is blinded. The prophet is blinded. God won't let him see. They clamor for the prophet to tell them what's up. But nobody knows anything. Priests don't have a clue. God shut them down. The elders, those that have run things, don't know what to say. The king holds his head in despair. The prince is devastated. The common people are paralyzed, gripped by fear. They can't move. I'll deal with them where they are. Judge them on their terms. They'll know that I am God. God will judge you and deal with you on your terms. What does that mean? He means on the level that you're at, on the level of your knowledge, on the level of your sin. All right, verse eight, chapter eight. So God is still not done dealing with Ezekiel. The spirit is getting ready to carry Ezekiel off again. And he's going to show him more visions. So Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1. In the sixth year, in the sixth month of the fifth day, while I was sitting at home meeting with the leaders of Judah, it happened that the hand of my master, God, gripped me. When I looked, I was astonished. What I saw looked like a man. 
from the waist down like fire and from the waist up like highly burnished bronze. He reached out what looked like a hand and grabbed me by the hair. The spirit swept me high in the air and carried me in visions of God to Jerusalem. To the entrance of the north gate of the temple's inside court, Jesus, where the image of a sex goddess that make that makes God so angry had been set up. Right before me was the glory of God of Israel, exactly like the vision I had seen on the plain. He said to me, Son of man, look north. I looked north and I saw it. Just north of the entrance loomed the altar of the sex goddess, sex goddess Asherah. That makes God so angry. Then he said, son of man, do you see what they're doing? Outrageous obscenities. And doing them right here. It's enough to drive me right out of my own temple. Do you hear that? Some of the stuff that's going on in our churches, God is saying it's enough to drive me right out of their services. But you're going to see worse yet. It's not even the end of it. He brought me to the door of the temple court. I looked and saw a gaping hole in the wall. He said, son of man, dig through the wall. I dug through the wall and came upon a door. He said, now walk through the door and take a look at the obscenities they're engaging in. I entered and I looked. I couldn't believe my eyes. Painted all over the walls were pictures of reptiles and animals and monsters and the whole pantheon of Egyptian gods and goddesses being worshipped by Israel. You can't come to God and give him foul worship. Unclean worship. It stinks in his nostrils. Being worshipped by Israel. In the middle of the room were 70 of the leaders of Israel. The leaders. Those who are up there preaching the word were the leaders of this thing in the center. In the middle of the room were 70 of the leaders of Israel with Jehazani, son of Shepan, standing in the middle. Each held his censer with the incense rising in a fragrant cloud. He said, son of man, do you see what the elders are doing here in the dark? Each one before his favorite God picture. They tell themselves, this is what we tell ourselves, listen. God doesn't see us. God has forsaken the country. Then he said, you're going to see worse. Verse 14. He took me to the entrance of the north gate of the temple of God. I saw women sitting there weeping for Tammuz, the Babylon, ba Babylonian fertility god. He said, have you gotten an eyeful, son of man? You're going to see worse yet. Finally, he took me to the inside of the temple, an inside court of the temple of God. There between the porch and altar were about 25 men. Their backs were to God's temple. They were facing east, bowing in worship to the sun. Not the S-O-N, the S-U-N, the sun. He said, have you seen enough man of God, son of God? Isn't it bad enough that Judah engages in these outrageous obscenities? They fill the country with violence and now provoke me even further with their obscene gestures? That's it. They have an angry God on their hands. 
for now on, no mercy. They can shout all they want, but I'm not listening. What are we giving God when we come into worship? What is going on on our altars? Is God saying no more mercy? We the church as a body, we the church as a collective family, we the church as individuals have got to lay down all these obscene gods that we have put before him. And say, this is, the, this is what we're going to worship. This is how we're going to worship you, God. We know that you uh, will accept this. No, he will not. He's letting us know a lot of this stuff that we're doing, it does not glorify him. We see more sickness now in the body of Christ than we have ever seen. And we wonder what's going on. It's because we have walked away from the principles and the judgments and the statutes of God. We have got to turn back. And even if you're one of those people that have said, well, I don't attend church, you're not exempt because you have to answer to God the things that you are doing just because you don't attend a church. The only reason why you're not attending church is because pride has gripped you. I don't need God, really? Why do you have so much chaos going on in your life? Because you've spoken out of your mouth, you don't need God. You don't need to, to go to a church. You don't need all that. Don't you know that God operates through people? Your deliverance could be in somebody that's sitting in a pew three, three rows over from you. They've got your deliverance. They've got your answer. They've got healing in their hands to lay on hands on you and command sickness to leave your body. Somebody can speak a word of knowledge to you. And the turmoil, the mental turmoil that you've been going through is released because God uses people to deliver people. But we're so busy looking at, well, they not doing this right. They not doing that right. Neither are you. So let's look at this word and let's let God show us where we have put idols before him and repent of it. Ask God to show you the words that you have spoken that are bringing about your own devastation. You say, I'm not devastated. Look at my bank account. It's got seven zeros, seven, 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 seven digits, six digits. I'm making more money now than I've ever been making. But you can't enjoy it can't even enjoy the food that you eat because it makes you sick to your stomach. You can't enjoy your house because there's so much chaos going on in your house that when you come home, you just don't even want to be there. Don't even like the job that you're working. You got to ask God, what idols have I put before you? And when he shows you, repent and get rid of all the idols in the house. Get rid of all the idols that are in your spirit. Get rid of all the idols that have wounded your soul. You can't hear God. There's an epidemic going on in the body of Christ right now. People are saying, you hear from God? Yeah. Yeah. You want to know what drove me to God even more? In Austin, Texas, sitting at, I think it was called St. John's Church. I think it was St. John's. It was a Baptist church. Church. It was, the, it was one of the big churches that everybody used to go to in, in Austin, Texas. And this lady was sitting next to me and she was talking to her friend and I heard her say, God speaks to her. And I said, God speaks to you? Now, now let's back up a little bit. I'm a bishop's granddaughter. We'd go to church. We'd, drive, we'd go with him wherever he would go. He would come and pick me up on Sunday mornings. But I didn't even know that God would talk to you. 
what? I was like, God, you talked to her? So I asked God, I said, if you talk to people, I want to hear you. And God began to bring me closer to him. He's the one that will open up your understanding. Holy Spirit will begin to minister truth to you. <laughs> His glory will descend upon you. Your eyes will be open. <coughs> and you will see His glory. Your ears will be open. And you'll hear His voice directing you how to come out of this. Walk away from this people. Walk away from that situation. It's going to bring destruction. Keep your eyes on me. Yeah, I see what they're doing. Keep your eyes on me. Wow. So, Father, as we've read Ezekiel chapter 5 through 8, we're finding that you are a jealous God. We're finding that there is nothing that we can do. There's no way we can hide from your eyes. You see it all. You know it all. You know our intents. You know our hearts. So we thank you that you're going to minister to us through this book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is a, it's a hard book to swallow. Because this may be the first time that we have heard with our ears how you don't like the idols that we have put before you. So we come humbly asking you to teach us how to come before you correctly. We come asking you to show everything that is blocking our right relationship with you. And we won't run from it, God. We won't run from you. We won't run from your hand. For the correction is not to crush us. The correction is to heal us. The correction is not to put us in shame. The correction is to let us see we are loved. We are your beloved. And that your glory is being poured out. And the pure water of the spirit is washing us and we're being sanctified by your word we're being purified by your word and we're being transformed from for, by your word we thank you holy spirit for how you're tenderly dealing with us you're tenderly exposing the foxes that are nipping away at our vine. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're uncovering everything. And this time, we're not going to run. We're not going to pack our bags and run, but we're going to sit here and allow you to have your most perfect work in us. Thank you for making us again another, another vessel. This vessel that you're making where there was cracks in it. What you're doing is you're putting us on the potter's wheel, which we're going to read in Jeremiah. You're putting us on the potter's wheel. You're pouring your water on us and you're smashing, mashing, smashing, mashing, smashing. And then you're building us back up again. And this time when you build us, there will be no cracks. There will be no idols. There will be nothing between you and us. We will be a vessel fit to receive the new wine, the glory of the Lord, shining brightly through us, filling, filling us as we are overflowing with your love, with your forgiveness. Hallelujah. And as we do that, we can then show someone else how to get free through the word of God. We thank you, Lord God, for how this word is transforming our lives. 
in the holy and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Lord God. We bless you for it, Lord God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, everyone. I know that you all are going to be watching this from the replay. I know that this is a new place that we're doing the lives and everybody's got to transition over here to this page. But come on and transition over. Come on, you walk 21 days with this reading. Don't stop now. Hallelujah. And the word is just going to get better and better. It's going to taste like honey. Sometimes when it hits the belly, it's a little bitter. But it satisfies the soul. And that hunger and thirst that you've been hungering and thirsting for, you're receiving by reading the word. And allowing it to penetrate into your life. And you're going to find that you're not hungry anymore. You're not thirsty anymore. Because God is filling those dry places. He's filling those places that were famished and diseased. He's filling them with his glory. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to be back tomorrow, Lord willing. We're going to be reading Ezekiel 9 through 12. Don't forget, when you come on and watch the replay, let me know that you're on. Let me know where you're watching from. And don't forget to share. Let's share. Let's share. Let's share. Hallelujah. Let's share. Share this with your friends. Let's all get right before God as we read his word. And the beautiful thing about it, Ezekiel told us God deals with us right where we are. Some of you know this word better than I do. God is going to deal with you right where you are at your level. For those of you that are just beginning to walk with the Lord, God is going to deal with you at your level. The expectations are different for each of us because he deals with each of us right where we are. All right? I love you all so much. Don't forget to come back out here and join again tomorrow. I will be posting this in the group page and I'm going to post it on my personal timeline for the rest of this week, which will be tomorrow. And I guess I probably should do it on Monday also, but then we want everybody to transition over to this page, everything in one central place. So we don't have to, um, have different posts all over the place and you're not receiving three and four different posts from me at the same time. Okay. I love you all so much. And thank you for joining me as we read the word of God, cover to cover, having a conversation face to face with God in his word. I love you and thank you so much for joining. Bye bye.